What's up champions? Welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start training for the Iron Cross. Can't be controlled, I gotta live free. If I just play by the rules, I wouldn't be me. And I've been winning since I So this is how Iron Cross looks like. This is definitely one of more demanding elements and if you're a beginner, don't even think about the Iron Cross. First, make sure to develop your basic pulling and pressing strength. So develop those pull-ups, chin-ups, weighted pull-ups. Uh, develop those dips, weighted dips as well. And you also gotta be able to dips on the rings. Very important. So, if we want to start training for cross, the prerequisite is definitely being able to spend some time on the ring. So we need a rock solid support position. So what would that mean? I would say about five sets of, of 30 seconds or even better would be swinging support position. So if you can swing for five sets of 30 seconds, then you definitely feel pretty stable here and you can also probably perform some dips. So this would be the number one thing. So if you don't have that ring support position locked down and if you can do ring dips for let's say five sets of five with turning the rings out in the support position obviously and fully straightening the arms then this video is not for you so make sure to first work on your basics and then come back towards the iron cross progressions so a few details about the cross it's a straight arm element so we need completely straight locked out arms so not like this complete lockout and also if you got hyperextension still it's a complete lockout so it's not it's not up to here, it's full on. So we need a full lockout with the cross, very, very important. So that's the first thing, we need completely straight arms. And uh, regarding the scapula position, a couple of details, so we need depression, very important. I always talk about depression these days. But yeah, again, depression, so avoid uh, getting your head down when you're training for the cross. It's very important. I see a lot of the time people tend to look down and then this starts to happen. So you want to be here. And also it looks much better. Cross like this, it doesn't look like good. Like here, you kind of feel like Superman. So depression is a must. Then uh, and it's a very interesting thing here regarding the protraction or retraction. So in the cross, actually, if we protract, so if we stay in a more protracted position, still okay, in my opinion, doesn't look the best. It's still okay, often seen in gymnastics these days, because protraction is a bit stronger. So here, 90% your pecs, your delts, so muscles in the front. If you're gonna be holding a cross with retracted position, very rarely seen and very, very difficult, but on this one, 90% muscles in the back. While if you go with a neutral scapula position, it's kind of 50-50. So 50% anterior chain, 50% posterior chain. So this is where I want you to be. Definitely still, if you feel more comfort, a bit more comfortable protracted, you're gonna protract a little bit, it's gonna happen naturally. If you have a stronger back, however, you have a very strong front lever, very strong pulling strength, then you're probably gonna retract a little bit. But all the positions are actually okay, as long as you keep your arms uh, straight and the shoulders in an actual depressed position. But both slightly protracted or slightly retracted is okay. Just keep that head neutral and maintain that depression. So yeah, that would be all, all about the technical difficulties. Now let me show you the exercises. Kind of the tricky thing is I injured my lower back the past Saturday uh, doing some stupid stuff. So right now I'm still on a rehab, so it might, I might look very healthy and energetic, but my pike flexibility is actually very limited right now and I'm forced to spend about 20 hours a day lying on the bed, which I don't really like. But yeah, basically I still wanted to make some videos for you. So I have a lot of clips that I filmed in Bali for the Sky Calisthenics University as well. So you don't get to hear all the instructions, but I'll definitely leave some of the instructions for the exercises as well. Uh, so you can also kind of get a sneak peek for how the Sky Calisthenics University is gonna look like. So right now I'm gonna show you all, your, all the different progressions that you can uh, try to use and implement into your training. I would train the cross about one time per week. I would not do it more often. And I would spend another time, uh, another session that you have for basic upper body pulling and pressing strength. Because iron cross is actually the transition. So you need both. So it's not only about the pulling strength, it's about pulling and pressing. Because if you look at the cross, if you look at the muscle up on the rings, that makes more sense. Here, this is a transition. If we go wide muscle up, it's right here. If we go straight arm muscle up, boom. This is a transition. So in this part, this is kind of the pull towards the cross and here we're kind of pressing. So yeah, just for those curious, iron cross is actually the transition part. Very interesting. So yeah, 
I'm gonna show you all the exercises right now. Make sure to do everything with proper form. You're gonna feel some tension on the elbow, but make sure not to feel too much. So make sure you, you, you'll be strengthening, not damaging. So from person to person, it's completely different how much, uh, how much time and yeah, how many, how much work they need for their elbows to prepare the stress that the iron cross is about to unleash upon you. So you definitely need to spend your time on the rings. For some of you, that's gonna be more. You maybe have a bit more sensitive elbows, maybe a bit more hyperextension as well. For some of you, it might be very little accessory work for the elbows, but definitely make sure that you don't feel too much stress. So that's why iron cross is a very stressful element. So about one time per week, if you're already on that higher level and you can afford to train the cross, because even one time per week, it's actually a lot. If, however, not on such a high level, don't jump for the cross right away, but work on your weighted chin-ups, weighted pull-ups, weighted dips, weighted ring dips, and then come back for cross, and it's gonna happen much faster. But right now, let's enjoy the exercises. Boom. Feet assisted iron cross pulls. So iron cross is just very easy to train just by standing on the floor. So let me show you how this looks like. I would usually start in like a support position and I would simply lower down, maintaining that depression, lower down up to here. Kind of try to also find what's a good position for the, for the shoulder. So for me, this feels about the best. So not fully protracted, kind of neutral. Retracted feels difficult as fuck. So something like neutral feels the best. And then I would play around uh, and move around that position. But you can also have a good enough intensity here to do a working set. So basically, start in a support position, engage that false grip, try to have as least amount of weight on the feet as possible, lower down to the cross, or even a little bit lower, and then pull back together. So fantastic way to put some tension on the elbows, to learn how to engage that false grip with the cross, and to learn also how to properly engage that scapula connection and maintain that depression. So you can get a very nice, very intense exercise, very good progression for that iron cross. And also especially good to learn how to engage that false grip. So here with the cross, you start like this, but as you go out, you don't have the wrist like this in a neutral position. So here, no false grip. You have to learn how to get the wrist across right there to maintain that false grip. So just like this. So here, this one is beautiful, especially for that reason. Because usually we will practice in the future with some assisted iron cross pulls or using the iron cross trainer. But to actually get a feel for it, how it's like to do it on the rings, this one is beautiful. And I usually use it for the warm up till this day. So depression, straight elbows, Make sure the hips are direct, directly below the shoulders. Don't want to stand here. Also don't want to stand too far forward, looking like this. So be in a realistic position. False grip. And then simply work those pulls. Yes. Ah, feels phenomenal. So feed assisted iron cross pulls, beautiful exercise, give it a try, learn it, love it, and reap the benefits. Boom.
So these are the basic exercises that I use to develop the cross at a 90 kg body weight. Definitely took a long time. I remember back in the day that I really wanted the cross. I sometimes trained it even twice, twice per day, which I told you, uh, you should train it once a week. So twice a day was definitely way too much. Uh, but actually with time I got smarter and my technique also improved and then within I would say like maybe within three four years of the body weight of, of 90 kgs I actually developed an iron cross but yeah make sure to take it one step at a time work on your basic bent arm pulling and pressing strength try to improve your ring dips as well so this is very important go weighted I know a lot of the guys are working weighted dips on the dip bars but the weighted dips on the rings that's actually something that's uh, very phenomenal and beneficial, especially for cross development. So how do, would the training look like? I would basically choose three, three exercises. So I would choose the primary exercise and go for about five sets of five reps, basically should be your kind of like uh, main objective. So about five sets of five of the hardest exercise, and then you go with one accessory exercise. So one exercise that's a little bit different, maybe a little bit easier. You go for about five sets of five, and then I would finish when, with one exercise specifically for the sake of elbow. So maybe something like the ring support position or the push-up support position. So about three exercises and about five sets of five reps on every exercise. Surely if you're just starting, make sure to start with maybe three sets of five reps per exercise. So you won't be, you won't be extremely sore the next day. So take it one step at a time, but as the body adapts, you can definitely put in more and more work. Just make sure you're strengthening, not damaging. So if you feel a little bit of pain, a little bit of frustration, a little bit of discomfort on the elbows, elbows that's definitely gonna happen. But if just maybe one elbow is bothering you more and more and more and more, and make sure to address it and even back off from the iron cross training if you have to because otherwise in the long term you're not going to be very healthy and also you're probably not going to achieve the cross so train smart remain healthy make sure you're strengthening not damaging uh, work on your basing pulling and pressing strength and then once a week if you're on that level uh, go for that iron cross training and uh, i'm also going to show you one more exercise with the iron cross trainers and this is kind of the main exercise that actually got me to bridge the gap from the assisted assisted uh, iron cross to an actual iron cross so for everybody who's still in watching this video i'm going to show you this in the next video so the one exercise or should i say the one thing that contributed the most towards me learning a cross was actually making those iron cross trainers and i'm going to, I'm going to show you a little bit uh, about that in my next video so yeah make sure to subscribe and also if you want to train smart if you are serious about making some progress with your body with your strength development with your bicep development then make sure to click the link right here in the video description and check out some of my tutorials so click the link and check out tutorials and i'll see you guys right there thank you so much for your time and remember you're champion boom